Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're here with the Vampire Counts, as you can see from the ultimate haggard lord here, the generic Master Necromancer. Yes, indeed, I've brought the generic Master Necromancer today, despite all of the cool legendary lords and other lord selection that the Vampire Counts have access to. We're going to take the ultimate haggard lord in the uh, good old master necromancer here. So we'll talk about that guy in just a minute. We are going to be facing off against the warriors of chaos. So now let's jump to the army compositions. This master necromancer here, what sets him apart from the other vampire lords is he is dirt cheap. He is literally the cheapest vampire lord you can get. In the guys I've brought him in, I think he costs something like 950 points. I'll need to double check after, but being a necromancer, he does have the Master of the Dead trait to give an area of effect healing. He also has access to lore of vampires, obviously, and has Invocation of the Heck, Dance Macabre, and Raise Dead. He also has Magical Animus for a uh, leadership area of effect ability. It's uh, similar to Stand Your Ground or others, but without the uh, melee defense. Wand of Jet gives him additional power recharge rate at the cost of a 30 second ability recharge, which is, uh, you know, decent in the late game when you don't really have Wounds of Magic anyway, you're not really going to be casting a spell or using an ability, so it's useful to have that Wand of Jet to get the extra Wounds of Magic. Also, Scroll of Power for a minus 90 ability recharge, so that we can just spam out as many uh, zombies as possible, potentially. For the rest of the army, we've got a Mortis Engine, a Corpse Cart, two Terror Geists, as is pretty obligatory these days for the Vampire Counts. Terror Geists are just a pretty, pretty decent unit overall. They have poor weapon skill at only 26 melee attack. 42 defense is pretty decent though. Mainly, the, the thing you want is the Armor Piercing Anti-Large with the Poison, Heavy Armor, Regeneration, and of course this Death Shriek. Good against large targets, a Breath Attack. For an Infantry Corps, we've got a mix of Skeleton Spearmen with some Grave Guard with great weapons, and we've also got the Dire Pack backing up the Varix Reavers. <clears throat> Quite a big fan of the Varix Reavers. They're similar to Reichsguard and other uh, kind of Swiss Army Knife type cav. They're decent in most situations with 12 AP, 62 charge bonus, and regeneration, 110 armor. Uh, they, they're, uh, you know, not going to win any beauty contests, certainly, uh, compared to some of the other similar types of cavalry. But uh, they are pretty cool, and at the end of the day, they can get some serious work done, and I'm a big fan of Heavy Cav in general, especially this kind of Swiss Army Knife type. Uh, no, they're not anti-large, you know, they're not, they're just Shock Cav, pure Shock Cav, uh, similar to Reichsguard, like I said before, I really, really like that role. And that's pretty much it for my army for the Forces of Chaos here. We've got two units of Marauder Horsemen, Throwing Axes, Big Bird, Dragon Ogre, Shagoth. Front line is going to be Sword and Board, Chaos Warriors with two Aspiring Champions and two units of Chaos Spawn. So uh, yeah, Chaos Spawn are pretty decent in this matchup. They're unbreakable, so they're not going to be weak to terror. You also don't have to worry about missile pressure against these guys uh, like you do with other factions, obviously, because vampires don't have any missiles. So I do like that pick quite a bit in this matchup. A little bit of a stealth pick. Uh, Sar uh, Sarthrell is decent too because he has magic resistance. Also has access to lower metal. Looks like he's going to be taking final transmutation. Dragon Ogre Shagoth, of course. Uh, large armored monsters, especially those with armor piercing anti-large, are always good against the vampires. So I like this list quite a bit overall. Uh, let's go ahead and kick things into full gear. We'll watch as things unfold. So right off the bat, we're going to be bringing up the terror guys to start a a little bit of a vampire skirmish phase. I don't necessarily want to uh, just march down here and march uphill at my opponent. You can see uh, my opponent's kind of on a hill and I am also on a bit of a hill here. So if possible, I want to try and force the engagement here in this flatter area in the center. Uh, that way neither of us are getting too many bonuses, but uh, <clears throat> Big Bird dropping his final transmutation a little bit prematurely, I believe. It is just a regular final transmutation, no overcast, and it's only on the one Terror Geist, and this is why I'm keeping these Terror Geists separated, so that if he does drop that final transmutation, it only hits one of them at a time. So I'm going to start to come forward a little bit, see if my opponent will meet me kind of halfway, and uh, we are going to start to unload the Death Shrieks on the Dragon Ogre Shagoth, and that is going to get my opponent, I think, to come forward a little bit here. He, the, the Death Shrieks do quite a bit of damage against uh, large armored targets. I mean, it's not in anything insane, but uh, over the course of a battle, if you can get all three off, they'll definitely do some damage. You can see the Throwing Axes are doing some damage to the Terror Geist, but uh, we're going to come in for a quick, uh, just kind of probing charge with these... Uh, the Dire Pack and the Varix Reaver is probably a little bit premature. The Dire Pack are going to take a lot of damage here as they do have zero armor, no mitigation whatsoever, poor melee defense and all that, so 
not the best, but uh, we do fly this uh, <coughs> Terror Geist back just to get healed by the Corpse Cart and all that jazz. Don't want him taking too much damage here, but uh, yeah. Trying to catch out these Marauders here, and this is going to get my opponent to start to commit to an engagement. You can see the, uh, the Dragon Ogre Shagoth also not wanting to necessarily commit to an engagement, but now my opponent's coming forward with his uh, Chaos Warriors and more, so... We are going to get an engagement in the flat area like I uh, would have preferred. And yeah, this obviously Skeleton Spearmen aren't going to hold up well against Chaos Warriors. But at the end of the day, they will uh, hold them in place for some time at the very least. We're just kind of probing around with the Terror Guys, trying to snipe off units. We did interrupt these Chaos Spawn in the back line. This is also a bit of a gambit to pull the Terror Guys, or sorry, not the Terror Guys, the Dragon Ogre Shagoth away from the front line so that he's not as much of a risk to the Mortis Engine and the Master Necromancer here. Haggard Lord himself getting up in the front line, going to be popping off with some magic, getting that Invocation of the Heck as Big Bird charges in. And because this Shagoth is separated over on the other side of the battle, we're going to bring down the other Terror Geist here, start to deal with Big Bird. And the Terror Geist will definitely do some damage. Big Bird doesn't have the best melee defense. It'll at least base uh, right now he has great melee defense because of the 62 attack however uh, the animus and we are going to be dropping dance macabre i believe in just a moment on that terror guides as well to try and give him some extra melee attack the back line very well played by my opponent trying to get on me with some uh, chaos boys and warhounds that i failed to mention earlier they are going to be a danger the master necromancer is a very very squishy character so i'm going to go ahead and get uh, some units in the back line here it looks like we're going to be summoning up some uh, zombies just to help uh, deal with those those uh, Warhounds, and then the Mortis Engine also comes in to get the Drain Effect and the Terror. Of course, Mortis Engine do, do cause Terror. Uh, terror Guy's getting distracted a little bit by the Chaos Spawn here, but he has managed to do a lot of da managed to do, do a lot of damage against the Chaos Spawn. It's getting me a little bit tongue-tied here today, guys. But uh, anyway, Terror Guy's also pursuing on the Dragon Ogre Shagoth, uh, trying to. Uh, keep it from getting back to battle but it does look like it'll do so another really nice uh, final transmutation from my opponent that one was a little bit better did catch both the master necromancer and the uh the uh mortis engine as well so yeah we'll uh, we'll eat up some action as more uh, invocation of the hex being dropped by the old haggard lord in the front line big bird's going after the corpse cart he's got his terror geist on station performing a little bit of a death star here and we're gonna get the uh not the terror i keep calling this guy terror geist the shagoth and the terror geist gonna dr drop a breath attack and then probably drop down into melee both terror geist just kind of chilling up in the air at the moment trying to get their breath attacks ready and uh yeah another breath attack and a rear charge from that terror geist and then a side charge from the other terror geist so we're just going full in alpha strike on this uh shagoth here trying to take it down so that we can then turn our attention to Big Bird. Unfortunately, the corpse car is crumbling. It has reached its healing cap, though. So uh, that's been good value. A lot of the units in this pocket have actually reached their healing cap. And the Graveguard with Grey Opens, who I haven't been covering too much, have actually been doing very well in the front line. Uh, this unit over here is still holding out. 59 kills, almost racked up an XP Chevron uh, over the course of the battle. So uh, decently cost-effective, considering they're facing against, uh, you know, Chaos Spawn, Aspiring Champions, and Chaos Warriors. Pretty, uh, pretty surprising overall. Uh, over here in this pocket, this unit has been much better supported and has actually won out. Uh, managed to rack up quite a few kills, uh, 38 so far and climbing. And uh, yeah, the two Terror guys did manage to down Big Bird and uh, and the Shagoth while I wasn't looking. So sorry about that. But uh, at the end of the day, the uh, Terror for the Mortis Engine, the Drain's going to kick in. And at this point, it's just the Unbreakable Chaos Spawn, I believe, holding out the leadership. Uh, so yeah, fun battle. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. <coughs> The nice thing about the ma the Master Necromancer, I have to say, is that he's dirt cheap, and he allows you to go very, very wide with the army. I mean, we brought quite a few expensive uh, elite tier units with two Terror Geists and a Mortis Engine, plus a unit of, uh, I guess, <clears throat> I don't know if I would call the Varex Reavers an elite tier cav. They're kind of a mid-tier cav, but uh, supporting him with the Dire Pack and still bringing it being able to bring two units of grave guard with gray weapons just going so cheap on the heroic core allows you to go very very wide with the army spend a lot of points on a lot of different places so i'm not saying this guy's competitive by any means but he's cheap he's he's you know you're a dollar store vampire lord if you will so <laughs> uh at the end of the day this unit of grave guard did manage to get an xp chevron 65 kills uh, both the Terror Geist did very well picking up two Chevrons, dealing with both Big Bird and the Shagoth. Uh, Chaos Warriors, I mean, you would expect them to get a lot of kills in the front line against Chaff units. The Chaos Spawn also doing very well. Uh, <clears throat> 74 and 17. This one did, did get an XP Chevron. I'm curious to know where that came from. 
but uh, the Hounds weren't quite able to finish off the Necromancer in the back line. Aspiring Champions, I do like to pick in this matchup to support leadership, and they have the magic damage in case you're running into ethereal units. But uh, yeah, just overall, uh, too much from the Vampires, the uh, the Haggard Lord and the, uh, the Terror Guys. All that healing, it was uh, too much for the Warriors of Chaos to handle. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you next time.